With that said, those are the two main scriptures that I'm going to start with. But we're going to go. With that said, I want you to think about what is your treasure. You can take your seat. You can take your seat. What is your treasure? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. You know, when we look and look around, a lot of times we associate treasure with monetary things. We associate treasure with materialistic things. We associate, we have to see it in order for us to treasure it. But you know what? There is a treasure that's deeper than anything monetary. Yes. There's a treasure deeper than anything that you can imagine. There's a treasure that we supposed to, that we should treasure more deeply than anything that we could ever imagine. Yes. And that is the, the favor of God. That yes. is the Holy Spirit. There is the, a treasure that's greater than you can ever imagine. But so many times we want to just say, well, show me. You know, there was a favorite saying, I mean, there was a, a popular saying that came out, I want to say it was the late 80s, early 90s, it was by uh, Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. Because everything, all the time, we want to equate something, we got to see it in order for us to believe it. We got to see it in order for it to mean something to us. But there's greater than, than what you see right in front of you. That's right. There's greater. Your treasure. What What is your treasure? Like I said, they aren't always monetary. Ask yourself, what is my greatest treasure? If I was to sit here and think, what is my greatest treasure? What is it that I treasure the most? Not necessarily what is my greatest treasure. What do I treasure the most? You don't have to uh, blurt it out. You don't have to say anything. But I just want you to think. What do I treasure? What do I keep dear to my heart more than anything else? It's almost like my last breath. What is it? Okay? And, and, and just think about that. Because the reason why I'm saying this, the reason why the Lord is saying this, he's focusing on your treasure. Because sometimes our tre treasures put us in these vicious cycles. Oh, my God. We're talking about cycles, right? We're chasing after something that takes us into a storm that we never should have been in from the beginning. A treasure that we treasure so much. Oh my God. Walk can, can, can you identify your cycle? Wow. Can you identify what is drawing you in? Can you identify what it is that you keep so close to you that you don't want anyone else to know about? Wow. That you think that you take into your secret chambers. Your chambers that you take with you that draws you and puts you into a cycle that you don't even realize that you're in a cycle. You don't even realize. Sometimes we don't even realize that we went because we'd be too busy chasing that rabbit and we don't even realize that we went down in a rabbit hole and therefore we, we don't even notice the surroundings that we're on and we find ourselves in uncommon places. Uncommon scenery, uncommon areas that we didn't even realize that it was going it was going on because we're too focused on what we thought was our treasure that we drawn us in. And we didn't even we took our sight off of what was going on around us and we just kept going and we just kept going and we just kept going. My God. My God. Just kept going. Treasures can be intangible. The most powerful treasures are intangible. Who here saw the movie Malcolm X? Oh, yeah. 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 What was the man scared of? It wasn't money. He was scared of influence. The power of influence. Influence you can't. He said, I'm not worried about whether he has this money or he has this or he has that. I'm worried about how he can gather all of these people together. Get them on one accord. I'm worried about the intangible, the force, how far this thing can go. We got to break this up. It was the intangible that was scaring him. It was the intangible that he was worried about. So, yeah. there, so therefore, it's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. These cycles, these cycles, these treasures that we have, our treasures, the things that we treasure the most, the greatness of them are intangible things. I, I, uh, as I was preparing this sermon, as I was preparing it, the Lord brought me to uh, a, a thought. And... Uh, this young lady I was dating, uh, or started today talking, we never dated, we just went out on the date. And we, was, we went out, we had a nice time, nice dinner and everything. And at the end of the night, she, she made a comment. And her comment was, you think? know, you want to know Josh? 
<laughs> a comment was, every day I have to buy some little thing, some little trinket, just to make my day feel complete. Oh, wow. wow. It doesn't have to be expensive. She said it doesn't have to be expensive, but I just need something to make me feel like it was complete. That my day was complete. It threw a flash to me. Sure did. Right. <laughs> sure did. It sure did. Sure did. And I thank God for that because I got my queen. All right. But it made me think about that, you know. You got what is it? Your, what is it that you have, or what is it that you yourself wow. feel that you need to make your day complete? Yeah. Wow! My God! Don't answer, don't answer out loud. What is it? Is it a cigarette? Oh! oh. oh. Come on, it's me. Stepping on toes. I'm stepping is on toes. Oh. oh God! Oh my God! Oh. Is it a shot? Oh God! Oh, oh God! Oh. You walking? <laughs> is it BT? Oh, Come on! Me and Mary Jane. It's the ESPN. Oh my God! You gotta have your sports fix. I found myself attached to that at one time. I felt like I couldn't go to sleep without knowing the scores for the night. Ooh! Uh, is it? Is it? Is, is, is it that you? Is a relationship? Relationship? Come on. Huh? Do you have to get you before the night is over with? Do you have to hook up? Oh. 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 What is it that you need today that you feel like you are not complete without? Wow. Huh? Huh? What is it? Tell me. Don't tell me, but tell yourself. I want you to think about it. When you leave, I want you to ask yourself these questions today. What is it that you need to complete your day? Wow. What cycle are we identifying right now? Mm. We're going to call this cycle V-O-I-D. Void. Come on. You are trying to fill a void. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You are trying to fill a void. And the Lord is, is trying to let you identify this void that you're trying to fill. Where did this void come from? Why is there a void there? You want to know why there's a void there? You're trying to fill a space that was never intended for you to fill with a materialistic thing. Yes. You are trying to fill a space that belongs to God. Yeah. yeah. You are trying to fill a space that belongs to the Holy Spirit. You are trying to fill a space that can't be filled with material things. That's right. Oh. So therefore, we try. We keep trying to pile on and pile on and fill in and fill in with things that can never ever satisfy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What is what is you feel? What are you putting in your void? Yeah. What are wow. you filling up the space that belongs to the Lord? Oh. Woo. This is what good. are you feeling, huh? Convict. And then you wonder why am I in this cycle? My God. Why am I in this place? Because you try to do something that you was never intended or was was never created to do. You yeah. was created to have a, a relationship with the Father, but instead you're trying to have a relationship with materialistic things that you're trying to put in there and fill it up. And so wow. therefore you keep going and you keep trying to pack it in and pack it in Breathe. and pack it out. And you can't pack it down because you go, you're packing it into a bottomless pit because you have no bottom, because you have no floor, because you have no foundation. Come on! Oh, Trying to fill in a gap that doesn't look every tenant for you to try to fill in here. Come on! You're using the wrong materials. Woo! Wrong material! You're using the wrong material. Amen. Amen. This system, oh. their, their system to break this void is just like I was saying. If you're trying to fill in a space that belongs to the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, 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 the Holy Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and yeah, yeah. he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring you to pass. So if you if you if you call it on the Lord, and if you're filling him, allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and fill this void, he would give you the desires of your heart. You don't have to be chasing after these things. You don't have to be wanting to have something to fill it in. You're not going to have to feel that there's a vacancy that's going on on the inside. Something that is a, on the reason why you're trying to feel this is how you feel empty. You 
feeling empty, right? Am I right? I mean, I wouldn't be uh, trying to fill in this space if it was already occupied, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, if I was already occupied and with the presence of the Lord, if I already having this divine relationship with the Father, I wouldn't feel that there's a lack because He supplies all your needs. He says this in your word, right? right. He will supply all our needs, correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. So therefore we don't have, we wouldn't have to feel like we have to find something to feel that gap. My God. I don't want to feel a space that belongs to the Lord. I want my heart to be given to him. I don't want my heart to be given to other things that distract me from where I need to be. If I want to be doing about kingdom, I want to be in alignment with the Lord. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be filled with things that's going to cause me to distract. Because when you're out on the battlefield, and if you're thinking about an ESPN, or you're thinking about your shot, or you're thinking about your kid, or you're thinking about everything else except what the Lord tells you to be Come thinking on. about, you're going to get distracted. The enemy is going to take you out. And you're going to find yourself in a dark place yes. that you can't ever was intended to be in. So in order for us to be on the battlefield, we got to come equipped. Come on! Come on right? In order for us to be equipped, we got to be filled, right? Come on! Huh? 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 Breathe. Why would there be a need to put on a whole armor of God if I don't have anything inside of me? Whoa. We got to be filled. We got to be heard up. We got to be where the Lord tells us to be. And we got to give him, give our ear to him. He said, my sheep should know my voice. How am I going to know his voice if I'm not hearing him? How am I going to know his voice if I'm not having a relationship with him? How am I, not going, to, how am I going to know his voice if I don't spend time with him? Oh, my God. The only reason why he's saying this is because he cares. He sees that we're in cycles that we shouldn't be in. He wants to be released from it. He wants to break these cycles. How do I break this cycle of a void? You allow the Holy Spirit to come in and fill that empty space. Yeah. You allow the Holy Spirit to come in and do what it was intended to. He said he was going to send a comforter back. The comforter is here. Don't let him stand on the outside and don't let him not come in. Let him occupy the place he intended to occupy from the very beginning. Don't shut him out. If you want to see yourself in a different level, in a different Light, allow him in. Yeah. Yeah. Allow him in. Allow him in. He is waiting for us. He is waiting for us. Let's break the cycle. Don't we want to break some cycles? Don't we want to go to another level in the Father? Don't we want to break some cycles? Yeah. Yeah. Real bad. All right. And that's the cycle of pride. 
That's the cycle. Top. Pride. What is pride? What is pride? Let's, let's look at the definition of pride. A high or inordinate opinion of one's dignity, importance, merit, superiority, whether as cherished in the mind or displayed in bearing, conduct, etc. You just straight up think you're better than somebody. Wow! Wow! wow. You break it down. You think you deserve stuff that you, you really wasn't intended to have. You just straight up think that you're just better than the next person. Wow. For whatever reason in your mind, in your thought, in your conscience, you just straight up think you're better. What does the word say about that? Wow. Does, you know, what does the word have to say about it? Pride actually was brought it's, it's actually in about 55 times. Wow. 55, you know, that's quite a bit. Wow. But I want to speak to pick on I, I want to focus right. on one particular scripture. Alright? Okay. Jeremiah 13, 15 through 17. Can I get you to get that one over here? Thank you. And it reads, Hear and give ear, for the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God. Before he causes darkness and before your feet stumble on a dark mountain, and while you are looking for light, he turns it into the shadow of death. And makes it dense darkness. But if you will not hear it, my soul will weep in secret for your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly and run down with tears because the Lord's flocks have been captive. Okay, for some of y'all you don't know what's going on right here. Israel's about to be captive. Okay, Israel's being disobedient. The Lord has had, had went before them many, many times, told them to turn their ways because you were worshiping people, worshiping idols in your secret places, and you're about to go into captivity. Yeah, my Lord. So you say, what does this have to do with me? Yeah. Some of us are already captive by our pride. We know you know. Yeah. We have been drawn in. The Lord has warned us time and time again. That we need to go in another direction. But no, just because we feel like we deserve, we feel like we, we, we are this and we that, we find ourselves in a captive state, in a captive state of mind. And when your mind is captive, everything else follows. There's a term that's going around right now that I keep hearing more and more uh, in, in, in the uh, corporate world, the corporate uh, arena, and it is where your mind goes, your body follows. Uh -huh. yeah. So wherever right. your mind is at, that's where your attention is at. Right. That's where your heart is at. Yeah. That's where your your treasure is at, and that's where you're going to be going also. All right. You find yourself you wonder why. So how did I end up on Fifth Street? Because your mind was on Fifth Street. Oh. Wow. Ooh. I got lost and ended up on, no, you didn't get lost. <laughs> <laughs> you ended up on Fifth Street because there was something on Fifth Street that you wanted. Wow! Whether it was good or you're not. Speak! There was something on Fifth Street that you wanted. You wanted it. So, Israel found it. Here in Jeremiah, he's talking to his people, and you know, Jeremiah is considered the weeping prophet, so he was crying all the time. Yeah, she was crying all the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. And he's crying for Israel because he's interceding for Israel. Man. Just like the Lord has been interceding for free and deep. There's yes. times when we're crying out for free and deep because we want chains broken. Oh, yeah. We want, we want yeah, yeah. so many That's things right. and we don't realize sometimes you got to have an intercessor standing in the gap That's of right. the multitude. Oh. The Lord actually was dealing with me this on. week on that, as a matter of fact. Oh. I was speaking with my brother earlier this week on Wednesday and I said, the Lord was telling me, I made you an intercessor. Yes. Be the intercessor that I call you to be. Yes. Free indeed has great plans. I have great plans for free indeed. Yes. So therefore, I need you to be standing in the gap. I need you yes. to be what I call you to be. Not just an everyday mundane person. I need you to be what I called you to be. So therefore, in order for me to be able to be the intercessor that I need to be, I don't need to be filling my board with something that doesn't belong to the Lord. I don't need to be in my pride taking me off the focus of the Lord. I don't need to be in places that I don't, don't supposed to be because the Father's in control. He should be in control of me. 
He should tell me who I need to be praying for, uh -huh. what I need to be praying for, how I need to be Come praying on. for, and what I need to be denouncing, and how I'm yeah. going to be able to walk forth yeah. and walk in the authority that he can commission me to walk before, walk into. The only way that I can do that, I have to break that cycle that's trying to keep me bound, trying to keep me from going with the Lord. What's that to do? Come on, Lord. Can I get an amen in the house and say we are chain breakers? Come on. Come on. Chain breakers. Amen. 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 So therefore, I'm not going to be walking in pride. I'm going to be the first one to say that I want to denounce pride today. Yeah, yeah. I want to denounce pride in my life. And in the area, I want I want you to repeat after me, Lord. Lord. If there's pride in me, if there's pride in me, put a spiritual mirror to my face. Put a spiritual mirror to my face and show me how to break that cycle right now. Show me how to break that cycle right now. Because I no longer want to walk in this pride. I no longer want to be the person that that's not what God created me to be. And then, and then, pride. You ask yourself, well, you may say it don't apply to me. Okay. That's pride. That's pride. <laughs> Come on. You say, I deserve that promotion. That person didn't deserve it. Ooh. I deserve that guy. She don't deserve him. She, she ain't worthy of him. She ain't done nothing. Ooh, so that's how they be him. talking. She wow. ain't she as cute house. as I am. Wow. Oh. I deserve, I deserve her on my hip because wow. I got it like that. Oh. I keep it tight, clean. Come I keep, on! I keep Come it on! In my Come on! I got a nice ride. Nice ride. My house ride. is on the way. Come, Come on. on! She deserves me. Woo! You know, pride. I, 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 I deserve so much more than what I have. Wow. I deserve so much more. Lord, why don't I have this? Lord, why don't I have this? Lord, why? Why? I've been doing what you told me to do. Come on. But I haven't been seeking your face, but. Right. Uh, Make it real. Uh, uh, but I deserve it because I work hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I work hard. Right. I get out there and I grind. Mm -hmm. And I work hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, I work hard, man. Yeah. That money don't come easy. I work hard. And I don't be, I'm not on the corner working either. I'm in the nine to five. I'm working hard. Come I got on! Sweat coming off of me. I work hard. Don't I deserve somebody there with me that can come home to? Don't I deserve that Bentley? Oh! Don't I, don't I deserve my five bedroom house? Wow! Don't I deserve it? I mean, I work hard. I bring six figures home, Jesus. even though I spend six figures. Come on! I'm trying to keep up with my image. Speed. If my pride tells me that I'm being. Speed. This is good. But you know, I deserve it. This is good. Hey, I came to this world with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. No, that is not what we're supposed to do. Come we're on. supposed to be a blessing to our church. Come on. I am so sick and tired of our people thinking that we do not supposed to bless the next generation. Oh, that is in the word. So therefore, we supposed to break the cycle That's so that we can leave an inheritance yes. to our children, children, children. Come on. Come on. That's the word. Walk, man of God. Break it up. Praise the Lord. Break it up. Praise the Lord. So, Hallelujah. so we got. I, I mean, am, am I saying that you don't deserve anything? No. Yeah. No, I am not saying that you don't deserve that. Yes. I am not saying that, yes, there, there's times when we do, we put in our hard work, and there's times when the Lord bless us to get that promotion. The Lord bless us to get that car, get that house, get, get a spouse, get a wife. We do it the right way, yes. But let's think for a second. What if the Lord gave us everything we wanted? Oh, oh. What if he gave you that husband? Oh. Gave you your three children, how many children you want? He gave you the nice car. He gave you uh, a bank account that's numbers you can't even count. You just lost track. Ooh. He gave you, Ooh. you know, he gave you a, 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 he gave you everything that you possibly could imagine. Anything that you could think of right now, he gave Man. it to you. Right. Okay, My God. Anything. Would that draw you closer to him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is good. Yeah. Will it? 
I mean, seriously, so many times we tell ourselves, if I just hit this or I just had that, you know, I know that the Father's blessing me and I know that He's giving me, He's giving me the desires of my heart. What if the desires of your heart is that you have the whole world? What if He gave you the whole world? Oh, man. Uh, the desires of your heart is I, I, I want everything. 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 Right. Everything. Lord, spare me nothing. Give me my all. Would that draw you closer to Him? Would that give you a better relationship with the Father? My God. I would say no. Why would I say no? Because now you got everything that you need, so why would you need God? Right. Why would I call on the Father if I got my protection, I got my woman, I got my house, I got everything, I got I got it just flowing like milk and honey. Why would I need God? Why? 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 So that's why he don't give us it. Because I need right. Right. He gives us portions. Yes. He gives it to us according to what we can deal with, how yeah. we can handle it. He gives us what we need. Okay, the desires of your heart should be in alignment with the Lord. Yeah. So when you go before the Father, He already knows what you need and what you want. So yeah. He supplies your need. But if you sit up there threatening, wanting everything that don't belong to you, you can find yourself in places that you don't need to be. Come on. So if you take your shortcut and you try to circumvent the Lord, and you try to get to this, whatever you want, maybe the person that's in Motel 6, or maybe wow. uh, wow. your fix that you, you know, it may be uh, a job that you didn't even work hard for. You lied your way to climb up the corner. Wow. wow. You should been what the Lord intended for you to get there. Woo. It oh my might God. be intended for you to be the CEO of a company, but you lied your way to get all the way to be the presidency. So now you're in a place where you're above, uh, you're, you're in a place where you shouldn't be, so now you're dealing with the wrath because your covering isn't there, because you didn't go through the Lord, so now you're exposed to the devil, and now he's just coming in and wreaking havoc, and you're wondering why you're going through what you're going through. Wow. Because you circumvented the Holy Spirit. You circumvented the Lord. You, you went past your father. You thought you knew what was best for you. Come on. I suppose the father knew what's best for you. So therefore, you went around him, got to where you want, and now you dissatisfied because you got a void because you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. Because oh you God, because if you had the Holy Spirit in you, He would have told you you're wrong. He would have told you you don't supposed to be doing it this way. He would give you instructions. He would tell you how to go up and go up the right way before the Lord. So therefore, when you come to the Father and you call upon Him and and you know that he's in your midst, and therefore you won't be ashamed. You won't be Adam. Right away, when the Lord comes searching for you, asking you where you at, right. you're not there because you're in a shame. The shame is, is taking you into places, into the shadows, because he was in the shadows. Yeah. He was in dark places, yeah. places that he shouldn't supposed to be. And so therefore the Lord had to go out and seek him out because we're in a place that we shouldn't have been in from the beginning because we went in the circle being in, trying to get to a place that the Lord didn't intend for us to be in it from the very beginning. Help us today, Holy Spirit. So we got to get on this fire, y'all. That's it. Because we can't be on hip hop homestead thinking that we're better than the people that we serve. Oh! Speak! This is good. He created us to bless people, not to look down on people. We can't be going out doing kingdom when we sit there thinking about ourselves. This ain't about us. This ain't about me. This ain't about you. This is about doing the will of the Lord. So pride will take you take your focus and shift it off what the Lord wants to do, which is take people and focus on us. I'm self-centered. I'm focused on me. It's all about me. All eyes on me. I can rap this way. I can preach this way. I can teach this way. I can do this. I got it all together. No, you don't. You're unraveling. You don't even realize you're unraveling. So we got to denounce pride. We got to break that cycle. Man. We got to break that cycle. <laughs> In order for us to break this cycle, we have to ask the Lord to give us the spirit of uh, humbleness. Yeah. Give us the spirit of meekness. Help us today. Help us to be what he called us to be. 
And if you feel that you have, and I'm sure we all do, whether we want to or not, we need to recognize what areas that we need to work on to break. We do all have some form of pride in us. And it's, sometimes the devil hides it deep, deep down in so that we can't see it. I brew the Lord. But in order for us to be able to go forth, we got to be able to look loud the Lord, put that mirror to us and show us. Yeah. And then while he's there, I want you to, here's a few scriptures I want you to write down and I want you to meditate on these each day. Because it will help us with this. Romans 12 and 16. Yes, sir. James 4 and 10. Uh -huh. This is good. And 1 Peter 5 and 6. I'm not going to go into details on these right now. Trust me, they will bless your heart. They will bless your soul. It's good. Uh, we need to, you know, due to time, we want to keep going. But we, we have a third cycle that we want to address today. And that cycle is misconceptions, unbeliefs, and lies. Mm. Wow. Misconceptions, unbeliefs, and lies. What have you been telling yourself that is our truth? Wow. Have you been telling yourself that I am where I'm at because of this or because of that? Are you telling yourself that I don't deserve more? Are you telling yourself, uh, I grew up poor, so I'm always going to be poor? The devil is alive. Are you telling yourself, uh, my father didn't finish school, so I don't have to finish school? Are you telling yourself that I don't deserve more? I don't deserve a nice home. I don't deserve, you know, no. Like I said, I wasn't saying that we don't deserve some things. Okay. I didn't say that. But the enemy can have you with these disbeliefs and these misconcepts that you don't deserve what the Lord has intended for you to have. All right. Okay. We don't have to stay on a certain level. We don't have to stay down below, beaten down. We can rise up. We don't have to stay in the places where we feel like we're in poverty everywhere we go. All we see is, is what's around us. We have to be able to dream the dreams and the visions that's going to take us up out of poverty. We have to dream the dreams and visions that's going to take us to the level of greater education. We don't have to allow the enemy to continually bombard us. He's constantly feeding us. Because here's something that I realized. We're only a vapor in time, right? That's right. Versus that's only a vapor in time. That's right. Yeah. Time means nothing to the devil also. Okay, he has time to wait us out. Yeah, he's not okay. He was there when in the beginning. He's going to be there at the end when the Lord kicks him into hell. So time is not of essence to him. That's yes, right. his time is running out as far as when he when his destruction is coming. But as far as the time, as far as we are concerned, he can wait from the time we're born until the time we're dead, and he can be bombarding us, and he will be bombarding us with every single arson that he has in his bag. And the thing that he knows the greatest is if I can get their mind. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Come on. I have their will. Yeah. Right. And I can do any and everything I want with them. Yeah. That's it. So therefore, he's giving you all of these thoughts. He's giving you all of these thoughts. You processing it. Now, you, now he's contaminating your thoughts and you processing it. And when you know, once it goes into your mind, the mind controls the body, so it sends it out throughout your whole body. So now I feel, now he's, he's working against my faith because once he gets inside my mind, now I'm battling with this. Oh, uh, it could be any type of form. It could be anything that comes against the word of the Lord. So therefore, I'm battling against it. I'm battling against it. Who's in your battling in their mind with things that's going on? And you're saying that I can't, I am not a conqueror. Even though the Lord says in his word that we're more than a conqueror. Yeah. Here, who's in here saying that I don't deserve when he said I got a thousand cows on a hill just waiting for you? Who's in here battling with things that, that, that they feel like they don't deserve because the enemy is steady feeding you nonsense, steady feeding you things that you don't even, even you hadn't even brought it up yourself. He's giving it to you. He said, here, I give it to you free. This is just a little bit of extra I just throw in. Just give you a little bit of extra. You know, just so that you can be thrown off guard yeah. so that you can't notice that you're in a cycle right. so that you don't know what's going on around you so that you don't know that he is steadily 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 trying to keep you off balance 
My because God. the reason why he's keeping you off balance, why? Because he knows he got kingdom business for you to do. Yeah. He has kingdom business. How can I be about my father's business when I can't even get my own business straight? My so we got to get our affairs in order. Wow. Right. And the only time you ever hear that word is get your affairs in order is right when somebody's hearing going to ground. That ain't the time you can get your affairs in order. Come on. You get your affairs in order right now. Yeah. Because we live it and we live it for the Lord. So yeah. therefore, we ain't speaking death over anyone. We're not speaking, we're not accepting. We're not allowing the enemy to come in and spread those seeds and plant on ground, on, on good, fertile ground. We're not allowing it. That's Man. Right. We're not allowing it. Not in this house. We not agree. in this house. Not in this spot. Not in this Man. Man. The devil comes in, he sows the seed. And he just sees out the wild. We start adding on to it. We just let our flesh take over. And then what happens? He leaves and goes off. He said, I come back and collect my harvest later. Oh, yeah. But no, we're not allowing it. How do we break that cycle? How do we break that one? Huh? Romans 12 and 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable with perfect will of God. Renewing our mind with the word daily. Once you fill in your mind and you, and you got godly principles and you got the word in you, it does not leave room. It does not leave gap for the enemy to come in. He cannot impart into a place that is already filled. Can you imagine yourself, you trying to pour something inside of a bucket that's already filled, what happened? It rolls off to the side. It just, it, it can't get inside if it's already filled. And if you if you feel with the Holy Spirit, and you feel with the word of the Lord, and if you feel with everything that needs to be filled, needs that he intended for us to be filled with, the enemy has no room. He, now, like I said, he's going to keep trying. Right. He's going to keep trying. So therefore, we have to. We also have to be. We have to be conscious of what is going on with that. It's going on with how we treasure each other. How we treasure ourselves. How we're filling our treasures. What are we filling our treasures with? Amen. 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 And so, as you, as as I say, as we're trying to break cycles. We're not breaking just everyday cycles here, people. We're not breaking everyday things that just goes on. What we're doing is we need to realize our treasure. Over here is a treasure that's intended for us to have from the very beginning. And over here is a treasure where the enemy has contaminated. Mm. What do we need to put in our treasure? Come on now. We need the love. Yeah. Come on. We need hope. Yeah. Come on. My God. We need peace. Yeah. Do you pray peace for your neighbors? Yeah. Do you pray peace for your for your president? Oh Lord, do you pray peace for your president? Oh, do you yeah. pray peace? <laughs> <laughs> do you feel your time with laughter? Do you have the faith that the Lord tells us to have? Have we steady doing what the Lord tells us to do? And we feel in our chamber. What did he want to give us in return? He wants to give us the riches of the Come world. Come on now. He wants, oh. to put, uh, he wants to put jewelry around our neck. He wants yeah. to give us the money that we so deserve in order for us to advance the kingdom. Yeah. He wants Man, to give us diamonds that. and pearls. Yeah. He wants to give us life. He wants to give us life more abundantly. Help us, Lord. If, if we want to continue with the pride of life, and we want to continue with doubting what the Lord has given to us. Right. We just want to keep filling this bucket full of negativity. And keep just going on and on. Just putting in the darkness that the enemy wants us to have. My God. He'll give us something also. What's in that box? He'll give you bondage. Whoa. Oh, no more chains. He will put you in shackles. Oh, yeah. He will put you in places that you never thought you would be in. My God. Not only will he shackle you, he'll handcuff you so you can't do what the Lord oh intended you to do. Yeah, right. Yes, that God will give you something also. Yeah. Who will you serve today? My God. Are, you, are you going to give your mind over to the enemy? Or are you going to be going to give your mind over to the Lord? 
Are you, where is your treasure? What is your treasure? As you go home and you think about this, what is your treasure? What do you treasure the most? What do you put? And this, and here's the thing. If we go back to our very first scripture at the very beginning where it says, store your treasures up in places where, uh, not on earth, but in heaven, a place where moths and rust can't destroy. This is a place where moth can't get to, but it can be corrupt. It right. can be corrupt. So therefore, we don't want to be putting corrupt things in what God intended for us to have from the very beginning. Amen. And I'm not saying that everybody here all of a sudden, oh, we all dark and dissident. No, I'm saying that there's some places in us that we got to visit That's in order it. for us to break these cycles, in order for us to go forth. Because the Lord has called you, you are his chosen people. So therefore, I know you have good in you. And I know that sometimes we don't realize we may have a small treasure chest right beside the treasure chest that the Lord intended for us to have from the beginning. Oh, so therefore, put all your goodness and all your riches into the treasure chest that the Lord intended for us to have. And watch him shower you with the glory of his. And watch him see. And if you, if you want to see your life changed, if you want to see everything come to fruition that you want it to be, you pour it and you allow the Holy Spirit to come in and you connect yourself with the Father the way he intended for us to be connected with. And I guarantee you, you would not only what you notice, but everyone that's going on around you would notice how the Lord has just shifted. Yes. You're no longer the person that we even thought you would be. And that's what we're raising up here at Free and yes. We are raising up mind changers. We yes. are raising up chain breakers. We are raising up soldiers. We are raising up leaders. Yes. We are raising up everything that God intended yes. for us to have in this house. So therefore, in order for us to be the leaders that we intended to be, we got to break this cycle. We got to break this board. And we are trying to fill, fill it with the Holy Spirit. We got to do away with the misconceptions that we're allowing the enemy to come in and to pollute our mind with. And we just got to realize that the Lord is good and he is great. And he got you on his heart and on his mind. So therefore, he brought this word for this house because we're going great. Oh, what a word. My we're going great. Yeah. Amen. Who yeah. ready to go with me? Of course, anyone here today that knows that they need that there's a cycle that's going on in their life that they they just desperately, desperately need to be removed. That desperately, desperately need to be set free. Today is the day for freedom. Today is the day of freedom. We we're not going to be playing around with the devil, allowing him to have his way with us any longer. Today is the day that the Lord wants to set you free. Today is the day that you have the opportunity to come before the Lord. Maybe there's someone in the house that knows that today is the, that, that they've been going around in a vicious cycle for too long. And they want the Lord to set them free. And they don't know the Lord for the pardon of their sins. And that's, that's you today. I don't want you to sit around and wait any longer. I don't want you to remain in the cycles. That you are, that you have been in, and wondering how can I get out? We have a solution. Our deacons are coming forward. Our deacons are coming forward on each side. We have a solution today. We don't have to be in this cycle. You don't have to be in this cycle. You don't have to be. In this cycle. Don't you want to be 